Okay, so holograms, prosthetics, laser guns, land speeders, spaceships, and warp drive. You are watching Disrupt. This is Running On Empty Food Review. Taco Bell has brought back the double chalupa. It's back. It's here. Here, light is projected and then takes form without any outside object to hold it. In real life, we need something to catch the light. But the closest thing is found in two technologies, and photogeometry scanning. Essentially what it does is scans an object and then takes that object and creates a 3D model of it in a computer. So let's say we have a camera like this scanning a person in real time. The data is then transferred into the volumetric display. I think this is the most likely form of holographic communication that we will see over the next decade. When Luke gets a new hand, he's actually able to feel his fingers. We've seen a huge huge leap forward, where people with fake hands are actually able to grab things and feel. Oh my god, I just felt that more. The system allows users to control multiple joints simultaneously and provides a variety of grips and grip forces by means of wireless signals generated by sensors worn in the feet or via other easy-to-use controllers. This is the ZKZM50. Thankfully, it can't disintegrate or set people to stun. To be honest, it looks more like a very high-powered laser pointer with a gun body. But if we move to something much bigger, here's the damage they do. So rather than sci-fi green and red visible light, they appear more just like silent beams, obliterating all that's in their path. I found two bikes that kind of give a similar effect. The first one is the Aerofex been around for a few years and yeah, it's pretty cool. The other one is the Lazarus LMV 496 that was just announced a few months ago. Obviously these are like crazy expensive, uh, but perhaps over the next decade or two we'll see <laughs> flying motorcycles become more commonplace. I'm not too sure, but uh, you know, they're there. Here's Virgin Galactic's spaceship. So it's lifted up by two high-powered planes, then dropped off, then it pulls straight up out of orbit, then rotates freely and falls back to Earth. Obviously this is much different than a free-flying spaceship like we see in the movies, but it is pretty close compared to where we were 50 years ago. Uh, with space commercialization opening up, I'm definitely optimistic that we'll see even better advancements in space technology that makes things cheaper and smaller. But for now, we have to move on to the last one. Speed of light. Tucked away in NASA, the Advanced Propulsion Physics Laboratory, led by Harold White, are currently investigating ways to warp drive. It capitalizes on the fact that it is embedded in its propellant in the seawater all around it, and move a column of water in one direction, and in order to conserve momentum, uh, the submarine moves in the other direction. So very similarly, the Q-thruster sucks in and spits out quantum vacuum. This is an artist's rendering of a vehicle that is based on real physics. To work, the ship uses a theory published in 1994 by Miguel Alcubierre. It works in tandem with Einstein's theory of general relativity. The ship bends spacetime like a wave by creating a bubble of negative mass within these two donuts. So rather than propelling through space, it is gliding across spacetime like a surfboard. As of 2020, this is not possible, only plausible. Assuming that all these measurements are correct, that yeah. they're not dominated by noise that you haven't accounted for. Yeah. And in a ficti fictional world where you will have funding to continue pursuing this at a, at a comfortable level yeah. uh, in other, for the next 20 years, yeah. where do you envision this technology to be in 20 years' time? Oh, Is this wow. something that we'll be able to use to send satellites to other planets? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a big question. I, I, don't, I don't have a good answer for you. I, I mean, I, certainly you'd like to make a lot of progress, but I mean, there's, there's no shortcuts, right? You know, it, it's a definitely crawl, walk, run. We'll, we'll try and make as much progress as we can within 
uh, the resources that we, we have, and, and basically the data is really going to drive that discussion. Perhaps over the next 20 years, we'll develop our understanding of not only dark energy, but the universe around us to visit the distant stars and galaxies. But for now, may the Force be with you.